Can we just start with Halifax, get that bit out of the way? Yeah. Um, a defeat, but by my reckoning, you'd, you'd still probably didn't know too many of the names and you're intercepting in, but what was your take on the game? Um, well, I was, I was pleased with the performance, if I'm honest. I thought if over 90 minutes, the performance on Tuesday night was probably better in most departments um, than on the Saturday, but the results weren't, and ultimately, we're all in the result, results business, so it, it was a disappointing. It was disappointing to get back on the bus with nothing for their efforts, to be honest with you, because afterwards the the data shows that we were right in the game. Mm. You know, we had as many shots in that game as we probably have in the last five or six games as a club. So the, the chances were created, they weren't taken. That's something that obviously we got to work on and hope it improves. Um, but you know, I don't want to give them too much praise too early because you know there's a lot of work to do, but. It seems to me that the guys are definitely coachable. You know, they listen, they're intelligent enough, um, and they're fit enough. We went toe to toe with a team that are right up there. At this mm. moment in time, if you're above them, you're getting promoted, aren't you? So, mm. you know, we need to have that level of performance against any opposition, you know, no matter what level they're at it in, this, in the season or in, in the cup competition. You know, if they're from a, a level below us, we haven't got to take that for granted. Um, and I've got to say, it, um, Pete was very, very complimentary of us as a as a group. So, it's as far as I'm concerned, it was a it was a it was a good step. I mean, it was a difficult game. Ideally, we wouldn't have had it. We would have had a week's training, but ideally, that mm. we could do we could say that about a lot of things. And since then, obviously, you've had a bit more time because mm -hmm. again, it was Saturday then Tuesday games, and, and I guess you had Sunday off. Probably. Well, we had Sunday not in. No, it was yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you had? You've had a bit more time with the squad, mm -hmm. a bit more time to get to know people. Mm -hmm. Presumably that's been quite beneficial to you and to the players and to Hugo. Yeah, I mean, it's a two-way thing, isn't it? They're going to get to know me and I'm getting to know them. Um, we haven't had enough training time, obviously. I mean, the people have got to realise when players don't come into training, it doesn't mean they're off. I mean, they'll be watching bits of clips yeah. and they'll be you know, doing you know, gentle exercise possibly at home or in a, a second recovery day or whatever. But when you think, I mean, we didn't get back to the walks till after two o'clock on Wednesday morning. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them lads wouldn't have got into their beds till after three or possibly four o'clock in the morning. So that night's sleep's gone. Mm -hmm. They've got to do the right thing on Wednesday, but then I give them Thursday as well to, mm -hmm. to make sure that we're back in this morning and, and away we go. So looking forward, we've got to be projective, sorry, um, productive in all three games in my eyes. We've got to try and get something out of all three games. That means the players somehow are going to have to turn around from the 26th to the 28th to the 1st, which is very, very difficult. Mm. And we haven't got a big group. We've got a big group in numbers, but we haven't got a big group available at the moment. Mm. Um, so preparation is key. Um, and that doesn't mean just from what we're going to give them and advise them to do, but they've got to, they've got to jump on board with that. So. Whether Christmas is in the eyes of the government lockdown or not, I can tell you these lads won't be doing much between now and, and uh, probably the 8th of January in terms of socialising. Mm. Well, that's not just the COVID thing, presumably that's, that's what I mean, it's yeah. the necessity oh, of absolutely. winning games. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's if the, you know, the, the, the national pandemic, that, or the international pandemic that we're all worried about, I mean, if that doesn't hit, I mean, the fact that already I think there's 11 games off in the Football League, yeah. There's games being called off in the Premier League. I'd be, I'd be flabbergasted if it doesn't hit our, mm. our level. So, we'll be doing everything we can here. Um, but, you know, like you said, it's, it's, there's no silver bullet to this one. We've got, we've got to keep swerving with it and ducking and diving. So, um, yeah, we've got to get on with it. Are you doing anything different with the pandemic in mind? I, I don't like to talk about that because it seems to be separate from football. But as you said, you know, it's sort of, it's now hitting again. Uh, any work you do or anything that had to be changed because of it or is it just keep on doing it and just hope it stays away? Well there's direct no you can't just hope it's going to stay away if you don't you know I'm, I'm a massive believer in that you've got to do in my opinion the people that run the country must in, in some way be giving the best advice to the vast majority of the people whether that's people who believe in them or don't believe in them it's not a political decision it's a medical decision and we have directives from the from the National League that we have to adhere to and of course we're in an FA competition on Saturday when the rules are slightly different. Mm. So just to let you know now, I know people 
who are associated with the club and, and, and mill around the place, that, that's not going to be possible at the moment. It's going to be a really sterile environment. The guys are all getting, we've all been tested this morning. And as of yet, I haven't heard of anything, um, but I've just had something stuck up my nose, so I haven't had my test yeah. back yet. But we're, we're waiting to hear, and hopefully we'll have a clean bill of health, and that's, that's the first thing. We need the players to, to, you know, to really make sure they, they, they give themselves the best opportunity to be available, simple as that. Should we go into the bill of health? Because um, obviously we, we sat in the stands last Saturday and there were quite a few decent players sat alongside us. What is the injury situation? First off, hopefully you didn't pick up any at Halifax. Yeah, well we did. We uh, picked, yeah, we did. We picked up um, Manash Sundari had a, a contact injury to his arm, which has had a he's had a bad reaction to it. So um, at this moment in time, he looks very doubtful. But uh, he's the only one to add to the numbers that you were sitting next to last mm. week. Um, I'm hopeful one or two of them will be on the grass with us this morning, but whether they're up to speed to be able to be involved tomorrow is one thing, but I'd like to think with another eight days between then and the next game that I will have a couple of more new faces, or not new faces, faces that I haven't been able to use. So um, Arthur and um, Maka are the two that will be with us this morning for a part of the session. Um, other than that, we probably are as we were, um, and that's good in one way because it's a, con a continuation. And you know, you'll probably find out with me if we ever, if we do have good runs of, of form, then it's harder to get out of my team than it is to get in it sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the, everybody who's played a part so far, and even the lads who haven't played a part, I've got to say, if the people of Kings Lynn don't think. It matters to these lads, it does, I can tell you. I, I've only been with them three or four days, but they've shown um, a want and an energy to, to learn, to listen, to get better, and ultimately to get ourselves out of the, the situation that we're in in the league. But ultimately, what a focus, I keep saying this, I'll never ask them to do anything more than win the next game. And that's what we've got to do. We're in, a, we're in an FA Trophy game, uh, situation on Saturday. It's one of four competitions we're in all all. You know, for the season, it is one that you can win, mm. and at the end of it is, is a trip to Wembley. So, mm. you know, people will laugh at that, but it's it's true. It's a competition this football club can win, and uh, it starts on Saturday. So we'll be as strong as we can be, and uh, we'll be. I can tell you, we won't be playing weak in, uh, a weakened side to save anybody for the next game because mm. the next game, which is Nantwich, is, is the most important for us. It's easily uh, point, uh, an accusation. It's easily pointed at managers, isn't it? If you're in a position, you can say. Oh, there's a good reason he's, he's picked a, a weakened team because the league is more important. But mm -hmm. you know, if are you of the view that winning breeds success, presumably, if you Absolutely. if you can beat Nantwich? I always scratch my head when I when I wasn't the manager, but I was at a football club, and the manager would say, as the next game approached and it was a cup game, oh, I'm going to rest him and I'm going to rest him, and I, was, <laughs> I used to think why. But but I, and I do understand that. Like I said, the schedule after the cup game is is relentless. You know, that, that three games in six days is is really eye-watering for me. Um, the players won't be thinking that, they just want to play football, mm. which is another good thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, if it would be wrong for me at this stage to say the league's more important. Like I said, the next game's more important. I'm still learning about the players, the players are still learning about me. And I think the more touch time we can have with the football involved, then the better. So I, I, need, to, I need to make judgments very quickly. The windows, Round the corner in terms of January, um, and, I, and I did say I would learn the most about these lads in the first three games. Which, as long as they can get on the pitch, the ones that I can make decisions. But uh, the ones that are sitting behind me, I'm sitting next to you, as you mm. say, I've got to reserve judgment on them. But I know, like you said, they have been viewed probably by everybody who watches the the, the club as first team players. So I have to give them an opportunity also. You did touch on that the, the, they do have a pride and, and a desire and a hunger. It has been an accusation before you were here mm -hmm. that some of them, some of the newcomers, didn't have that. Um, I mean, you know what happens when fans get angry? They want to find a, a reason why their team is, is not winning, which is fair enough. Mm -hmm. Do you, you don't see that? Not at all. Not at all. I don't see one of the. I don't see anybody not just player-wise, anybody who I've come into contact with since I've walked in the door that isn't rowing in the same direction as I've suggested we should be going. 
if I do find one, he'll be out the boat. It's as simple as that. Or she'll be out the boat. It doesn't matter who it is. Mm. So from that point of view, um, I haven't any concerns of that yet. Like I said, give it a week or two. One or two players who possibly think they should be playing and have been available might not like the fact they haven't been picked. They might come and see me. And I've got no issues with that at all. Mm. Um, but time is of the essence, really. You know, we haven't got we haven't got forever to make decisions. I've got to make swift decisions and. And they'll be honest decisions. They'll be from what I've seen with my eyes, heard with my ears, had a bit of advice off people who know a little bit more, for instance, medical reasons or, you know, performance reasons. We've got we've got great infrastructure behind the scenes here. Um, and I'll use everything I can to get as much information as I can. When I'm not here, I'm working as hard, if not harder, um, myself in the various things I can I can do in terms of re recruiting. Um, and, and observing what's gone on before me in terms of the player performance. I'm not worried about what's gone on before me in terms of the manager, the coach, the, all of that. It's, that's happened. We are where we are now. And our season started last Saturday. We started with a win. Fortunately, we didn't follow that up, but we followed up with a better performance. So if it was the first game of the season, I wouldn't be changing much into the third game. Haven't had two really good you know, returns out of, the, out of the first two games. You mentioned January. We all love to know if there's new players coming in. Where do we stand with that? Do you uh, can you see players yeah. leaving and coming in? Well, I would, I would say first and foremost, the the chairman has has said to me he will he will back me to bring people into the football club in terms of, of players. I've got to be mindful. I only I'll only spend his pound once. I won't ask for more than what he's, he will be there, and I want to get the best value I can. I think between now and. January, if I was to bring anybody in, it would be somebody that A, I know, or they know me, know how I work, and B, they'd have to be robust enough to, co to be competitive in three games in six days, yeah. be competitive to be starting at this level or coming off the bench at this level. It's no good me taking more young lads from professional football clubs just because they're from professional football mm. clubs. So that's the first thing. Um, so I'm probably the first manager that's not gone straight running up to the chairman and said, can I, can I do this, can I do that, can I do this? Um, but I have got a couple of things in mind that I'm, depending on what happens tomorrow, as to, I'm, I'm having a, couple, a look at a couple in training, so there's going to be a couple of new faces around the place, doesn't mean they're going to sign, but there's going to be a couple of people I'm going to have a look at. Um, Again, depending on how the, the injuries go after today and the weekend, and also how we come through Saturday, there could well be one or two new faces here by next weekend. There'll certainly be new faces here in January because, like I said, it won't all be my decision because I think one or two of the players will, will see that I might not be for them, they yeah. might not be for me, um, but that may be a little bit further down the road. That's fair enough. But we also talk about the game. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I, I think they're struggling in their league as well. I think they're second from bottom of their league. Um, but they did beat Altrincham the other day, albeit in a, a, a Cheshire Cup final. But for them, that makes no difference. It could be a league match. It's, it's the same, isn't it? So, yeah. uh, listen, and they'll be looking for you. Make no, <laughs> yeah, make no bones about it. They'll be looking at where we are in our league, and they won't care where they are in their league. They'll see that as an opportunity. So, I've been involved with teams in our position. I've been involved in teams in their position, playing in these sort of games. If we don't turn up and are at it. They will, they will come here and win the game, simple as that. We've got to approach this game exactly like we did against Dover or exactly like we did against Halifax. If we do that and we do what we do well, well on the day, and if we do the things we're not so good at better than we have in the two previous games, then I see us progressing. But I'm neither, never ever would show you know, um, disrespect to any, any team because they're coming across country a long way. They'll, want, they'll not want to go home with nothing, it's, no. their, it's their first cup final because mm. it's, it's a stage that they've, done, they've worked hard to get to, um, whereas it's our third round of the FA Cup if you like, it's our first entrance, we don't want to come out at the first stage. There mm. um, was a couple of things I did want to ask from last Saturday, mm -hmm. gold up yeah. front, that was probably his best performance in a Lynch adventure, he looked a lot more comfortable than, than he had before, mm -hmm. but he's still not got a goal. I mean, are we saying a goal will trigger him, or is there work to be done with him? Oh, there's, I think there's work to be done with all of them. I mean, at the end of the day, I, th I think what, what I did with goal, having known about him for a long time, I've known him at different clubs as well. I don't know the lad, but I, I've known about him as a player. And I think we have been uh, too harsh on him. 
he probably wants too many touches of the ball at times. So I just simplified his game. You know, just I've tried to make it sound silly, but I've tried to make the pitch smaller for him. Um, so he's more effective in the areas where, if he isn't scoring, he'll be contributing to other people scoring. And that happened with the first goal. Um, the second goal was one of them things that not many people on the pitch could have done. But I thought goals all round contribution against Dover was excellent, absolutely, you know, and, and it wasn't so, so much at Halifax, but there, there again, we played more football at Halifax than we did against Dover. Now, there's a lot of contributing factors to that. The pitch, for one, it was very, it, Halifax was excellent, it was like a bowling green. Um, but also the opposition played a different game. You know, they didn't, they didn't whack it down our throats, they, they, they were measured and they built up, and we were doing the same at times, but, you know, it, they're like buses on the for strikers goals it, usually when they get one they'll get what happened to Josh so mm. I would like to think it, it would it happen for goals I don't know if he's ever been a prolific striker I'll have to look back at his records but what he can be is a really effective striker mm. um, and if he stays fit and well and I can only see that improving for him I mentioned the youth earlier are you of the view that if you're good enough your age doesn't enough. matter Absolutely. I couldn't remember the phrase then, if you're to old be fair. Enough, <laughs> If you're old enough, you're good enough. Yeah, yeah without a doubt. I mean, like I said, I, undoubtedly there will be a couple of young faces again on the bench on Saturday. Now, I could go and get a 17-year-old from Ipswich or from Palace or from wherever. Do you know what I mean? But why? Why do I want to improve somebody else's players? Mm. And just the experience of being around me, around the first-team group and involved in a first-team match day at were own ground, that... People don't realise that brings youngsters on so much. The mm. confidence they'll get from being around us. They might hear a different language to what they hear from the, the academy manager, but that's part of the growing up. You know, it's what, what goes on in that dressing room will stay in there, hopefully. And um, it's a part of the, the, the process of them becoming first team players, I hope. And of course, I'm taking the recommendation of people who know these youngsters better than I do. You know, it's. Uh, and, and that's, that's accountability for the people giving me the recommendations. I'll know in a month's time whether I actually did get the best five signed or not. Mm. I think it was a week ago, I won't hog too much, sorry, a week ago, almost, we sat here yeah. and welcomed you. Good week, bad week? In different week? Um, great start. Good middle. <laughs> I can tell you about the end of the week on Saturday after the game, but listen, if everything was rosy in the garden, I probably wouldn't be here because you don't change your manager if everything's rosy in the garden. But often it's, it's not that the, the flower's not blooming, it's that the stuff that the flower's in isn't particularly right. So you've got to change the environment, you haven't got to change the flowers. Flowers are all all right, you know, once they get fit and well, they'll be blooming. But at this moment in time, there's a couple of Wilton and <laughs> I've got to put the right water and feed in there, haven't I? That's basically I tell you what, it. That's an absolutely brilliant <laughs> flower analogy. I'm having that. <laughs> that's just made a headline. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the gap between the teams, is it, have you had not much looked at at all or is it something you're going straight at? No, no. We, like I said, I would never do anybody the disrespect of not doing exactly what I would do if we were playing Chesterfield. You know, at the end of the day, it's our next opponent. They will be doing their damnness to beat us on Saturday and we've got to make sure we're as best prepared as we can be as a staff, but also then the players need the information that we have. What I probably won't do is I won't give them as much information as they've possibly been receiving before. Because that can sometimes hinder you. I've been a player. Sometimes it can hinder you or frighten you even if it's if it's really good. So um, they'll have enough information about what's coming. Um, only on what you know, we, they might change. We don't know what they're going to do, but but we know what they've done. So we can we can give them tidbits of information, and we'll and we'll, uh, we'll try and put our game on them. As simple as that. That's what it's about. If we can do what we do better than what they can, what they do, laws of averages will tell you that we would come out on top. Football is not like that. And cup competitions are completely Absolutely. different. Aren't Even they? more so, yeah. 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 You spoke, you touched briefly on Josh Barrett a little while ago. You saw his, his games evolving. He's obviously trying to get his weight off. He keeps mm. touching it in the press. He's trying to get his weight off. Have you seen two better goals in a game like that than what you saw last week? Well, I've seen him do that before, strangely enough. But um, no, not in one game. Funnily enough. Uh, yeah, I mean, he quite rightly took all the plaudits, but I mean, people forget he was only on the pitch 53 minutes in that game. So, you know, the, the last 37 minutes and stoppage time, there were 10 other lads who 
deserve a pat on the back as well. He did his bit and then they did their bit. And I think that's, that's tantamount to what I've been preaching to Josh for quite a while. He, if he's going to be afforded a little bit of uh, leeway because he's not so good at certain things, then he has to produce that sort of stuff. Now, he's not going to score every week like that, but he should be contributing either chances or, or goals. It's as simple as that. And the, the pleasing thing for me was within three days, he managed 70 minutes or so. So his, his fitness levels will, will, will increase with game time, which is a bit of a double-edged sword. Most people who've ever managed Josh, I know, give up before they, they get to the final thing. But um, I won't do that. You know, he's here. Um, and I see him being an integral part, but he's got to play his part at the uncomfortable things for himself. He's, he, you know, everybody can see what ability the lad's got. He's just got to buy into the fact he has to do something when he hasn't got the ball, and I'm sure he will. And obviously, because you've worked with him before, is that a good thing with you and Josh being able to link up together? And yeah, I mean, like I said, I just mentioned there about new faces. In the very short term, if I was to bring any new face in, I'd like to think it'd be somebody I've either worked with before, or I know, or he knows me or you know that sort of thing so there's something but it didn't it doesn't gain him any more favor from me no. you know at the end of the day they're all they're all on the same uh, even keel in that respect so he has to win my win my trust uh, again because we're in a different environment you know i knew he was capable of playing a part more than a part more than a little part in league 1 now we're two levels below that the contribution should be better or bigger from him in my eyes because his ability is better than the level. But is his application, is his dedication, I don't know. So I've got to find that out. Um, so it's, it's relearning for me about him, because he's changed, I know he's moved to the area, so there you go, he's committed. You know, he's committed to, like I said, I, I don't see anybody in that dressing room who is not committed to the, to the, the club, to the cause.